Hey everyone, I'm Selena for Who is Jesus Today? And as you know, the topic is going to be Israel. And on this particular video, I will not go into some of uh, the details that I'd like to address later as time progresses. And I'm just keeping my eyes open. I want to watch and pray as we are instructed to do it at all times. Those of you who know and follow Christ, we know that we should not let our guard down being a caught off guard. But at the same time as, as watching, we're to be prayerful. And we are also to seek out the truth because um, I know that uh, my people perish for a lack of knowledge can be taken out of a context as well. But then I, f I feel that that's a particular a verse that could apply to uh, various aspects of our lives. Um, I like to say, first of all, I want to say, let's think about and pray and be led on how to pray for uh, the families that have been uh, killed in Israel, the bloodshed, the spirit of terror. The spirit of a, a terror. A terrorizing, there is never any justification for terrorizing. It doesn't matter who's doing it. I want to address that as well. Um, there isn't any a justification for it. Um, you know, it's like maybe uh, someone did you wrong and that person that did you wrong you can't really get to them or maybe they're not even around anymore but you feel let me go now and uh, terrorize and destroy their family um so these acts of violence i want to say i speak against in the name of the lord and i want to also say I don't want to just focus on this particular uh, message about us being in the end times because of what we are seeing in Israel. We have been in the end times for a, a while and I'm going to go down a timeline of the attacks on the nation of Israel. And I'm also going to take this uh, message uh, maybe in a direction that you that you're not thinking that I would at this time, but I feel that is much uh, needed. Um, because, first of all, heart goes out to those that have lost lives and the wounded and the family and the extended family and friends. And on this uh, channel, this channel flows in John 3.16, for God so uh, loved the world, as you know, from time to time, whenever there is something that is uh, going on in the world that is turbulent and violent, and there's a persecution against the Christians all around the world, and uh, even when there are attacks on uh, as, uh, someone like, say, in New York City or Chicago or Philly or, you know, say in Colombia, um, as I'm led, I like to call it out and let's say, let's pray and be reminded of the tragedy. Like I'm going to say again before I start with even, say, Israel, be a reminded of our brothers and sisters who are being uh, a slain in the country of Nigeria and the northern part who are Christians who love uh, Jesus pastors that are dying for Christ. Let's keep that in mind. You can go and Google and you'll see. You know, it's not hard to find out about these things. And um, this is something that I have brought awareness to. And um, I have been involved with uh, signing um, petitions for there to be some uh, changes. Right, I cannot be there, but at least uh, if there's something that I can do that is a little tangible to make a difference. Um, again, these are acts of terror. 
these are groups of a terror that's within a religion. But not everyone in that a religion, though, really uh, promotes this type of a terror. So we have to point out that, uh, too, there is a, a difference from those who uh, follow um, a path or religion, whether we are in sync with that or agree or not, because we don't. However, it's, it's not that when we have what's uh, happening, say, in Israel, what's happened in uh, Nigeria and uh, other parts of the world, that we are dealing with terror. Right. Terrorism. Okay? And um, that cannot be applied to everyone within that uh, a belief system. A system, because as I, as you know, in this, this channel, uh, the, the woman that was uh, killed, okay, um, because she didn't have her head covered the right way in Iran, okay, and so right, so many disagree with this. Look at all of the people in the country that actually uh, a protest. You see, so yeah, I think you know we. We tend to go out very far sometimes, way further than we should. So I try to put things in some uh, perspective here. So let's keep our eye on all of the people around the world, people who are being uh, uh, tortured just to be uh, tortured, whether they are followers of Christ or not. But let's not forget our brothers and sisters that are being uh, tortured for Christ. And now let's focus our attention on a, a nation that is in trouble and devastation. The history of this particular nation called uh, Israel and why it does exist from the biblical uh, perspective here. I don't have the whole scope. I have not gone into in-depth uh, study. But I'm going to say what I know, what I have invested a uh, time in knowing. Um... Israel is important to me, as you would know, because I also end this uh, videos all the time uh, saying Shalom. And, you know, for some of us, if we have any uh, history uh, in anywhere in Latin America, including parts of the Caribbean and other places too, but we are sometimes uh, surprised to know that we are part of the uh, Jewish diaspora in some way or uh, another in our ancient uh, history. And so I know that a large a portion of my uh, history is Catholicism. Uh, I have never uh, myself uh, say I'm a Catholic, but that is my long history. And my dad was a devoted uh, Catholic. And so, um, but before there was, say, Catholicism, okay, in the Americas, um, we have different uh, situations that are happening, okay, in Spain with the uh, with which Jews being also expelled from that country, and there were those who took a migration and refuge in Latin America. We also have uh, populations from uh, the Middle East, right? Uh, Arabs, I, I think even like in the country of Trinidad, you have uh, um, an Arab uh, population or say a Middle Eastern food and culture. So people have migrated into the Americas a lot. And what we uh, find out when we are part of the Americas is that we can discover that we have ancient roots in Israel, ancient roots um, in the Middle East, in the Southern Levant, the regions like Syria and Jordan, and uh, you are kind of part of even like the Canaanites in the Bible, okay? And so, like, who were they? Well, these people are still around, uh, just have a different uh, names. And a lot of this uh, population can be represented in what we call the Southern Levant, which also includes Israel, okay? And so... Um, it comes as a surprise uh, to many, and some not as much, that you are also 
you're, you have some ancient roots, say in northern Israel, or you have some ancient roots in Lebanon, or, or you know, um, yeah, ancient roots in Ethiopia, okay, and Egypt, okay, that, um, and, and Sudan, yeah, some people out there would be surprised they have ancient roots in uh, Zimbabwe. You see, so when you come across this, um, it can mean something to you or not. And you know, for me, what happened is that Jews um, in Latin America, eventually people started to become more and more Catholic. So basically, Catholicism is the dominant of religion, but there are still a pockets of people that are Jewish as well as Muslim and who know that they are a part of the Middle East. Okay, so with that being said, I had uh, it, it put in my heart, okay, so if I go in, in, in my history, there is some roots to the Jews. Okay, to Israel. How do I want to really address that, especially as a follower in Christ, you know, Yahshua? Uh, I'm also aware of the history of the attacks on Israel. Knowing that a New York City outside of Israel has some of the largest uh, population of, 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 of Jewish people than anywhere else in the world. And I said, well, I represent that side of me, that ancient side that says, well, in your history too, you were aligned to you no know, Jewish people. And for me, I see Jews of all different backgrounds, by the way, because Israel was a mixed place. Uh, if you check the history of Israel, there were different types of people that were Israeli. So it's a region. What sets people apart, I would say, of all looks and, and backgrounds in the region of Israel were there were those who said they will not call on the foreign gods. The gods that you could imagine, the gods you can make with your hands but that there was a true and a living God. That God had called out a people. And we could remember Abraham, Isaac, and, and Jacob. Those who say that they believe in the true and the living God. This is important when we're talking about Israel because this is really the roots. This is the origin of a Hebrew people Hebrew nation, but what does this mean too? It's 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 not that it's just um, should I say um, exclusive? What makes uh, Israel a standout and ancient uh, Israel is the belief in a one and only true living God, and now we have God making a a covenant. And he's going to uh, reveal through his uh, covenant with these people the redemption plan of salvation. So I want to say, why does Israel stand out? I'm starting with it now. I told you that why there was some sensitivity as well that I have towards the nation of Israel. But then uh, as uh, Christians uh, uh, today in, and also Christians of the New Testament, uh, we also understand our spiritual uh, lineage is aligned to Israel. So whether some of us may see we have a genetic lineage or not, our spiritual a lineage for all of us is aligned to Israel. And this is why you'll see that, yes, Christians of today, and not just in the United States of America, 
all of the Americas, as well as other parts of the world, on all the continents, that's right, uh, they have in their heart also an understanding of the significance of the nation of Israel. Not as a culture or ethnicity or race, but what does it mean spiritually to be aligned to the nation of Israel. I want to begin that with the Word of God. So what we have going on is, is terrible, we know. It's tragic. And God's going to lead us to pray for, uh, for the saving of lives and souls and that this act of uh, terror would stop. It is wrong and uh, there is no justification for terrorizing because it doesn't matter what point we are trying to make. And I want to say, uh, I see what's happening there in New York City. A lot of times, you know, people flow in their emotion. Because it seems this is the right way to think for today. That you're going to say, well, I'm going to follow this way. So, um, I'm going to... I'm going to go on the side where I say, let's represent the Palestinians. In my heart, my heart is for the Palestinians. My heart is for the people of Israel, for, the, you know, for Nigeria, for New Yorkers, okay, for, uh, uh, for Washingtonians. You know, I got my favorite places on the map, but still, you know, uh, I understand there is a long a conflict in Israel and there is this ongoing a timeline of conflicts it hasn't just started as people know between the Palestinians and the, the Israelis um, I'm not here to approach this uh, politically but I want to say this once we understand what Israel truly represents then we'll start to understand that it's it's not about making Israel in of itself inclusive and that everyone else that's not of that uh, branch is excluded. Basically the plan of God and His salvation through the people of Israel was intended to be inclusive, not exclusive. In fact, it does as well include the Palestinians. It includes the people of Yemen. It includes the people, uh, uh, groups of Africa, of Europe, of Asia, of the Americas. It just includes the world. If I have to just stop there. Any place I haven't mentioned or that I don't even know exists. Once we understand this, we start to see this is a spiritual war, spiritual uh, battle, where a people are being used by the adversary, by the devil, as tools of destruction. Because they also don't understand the importance of the nation of Israel for them, spiritually, that God had a plan all along that He would write out the story of redemption this way through the nation of Israel, but this doesn't just mean a physical a nation, and it's not just about a geographical location and territory and who should get what side or this side. And so for some of you that are out there trying uh, to march and say what side you want, you have the right to do what you want. Please do it in also um, a civil, non-violent uh, way of expressing your rights to have an opinion. But sometimes we have an opinion without really knowing what is actually all of the facts, what's going on. Sometimes we have an opinion that seems like a popular opinion but really historically we don't quite uh, get it and certainly if uh, we have not had our hearts open up to what is God's plan uh, not just for the nation of Israel but for the world then we're going to miss 
us something and we are trying to defend a cause that we may not quite understand. But I do have a heart for peace in the Middle East. Yes, I do. And so let me focus on uh, the timeline. As some are saying, and I, I know that we've been in the end times for a while, and we need to keep our eyes on Israel because Israel, it's, it's, it's that indicator, okay, spiritually and politically, that lets us know that we are in a season for a change. That those of us who we believe in God's word, that there is a rapture of the church. A gathering of people who have called on Christ as their Savior from all over the world, and including Israel, and all kinds of people will be gathered to forever be with the Lord. But everything doesn't end yet. And there's going to be other uh, seasons of battles and conflict. But in God, there's always a victory and those are on the Lord's side. There is no loss. So, does this particular tragic war now bring us to a, a, a place where we have this shift, where you're going to see where are where have all of those people gone who said they were Christians around the world? The world's gotten kind of empty, uh, or or is it not? Is this to be sadly? Another one of those uh, uh, conflicts that's added on to the uh, timeline of Israel's ongoing um, uh, conflicts to stay alive. There's a reason why uh, there's the fight for Israel to keep existing. And you'll see how that also correlates that no matter who you are in the world, when you come on the Lord's side to believe in Yahshua, you're going to see that there's going to be a battle for you to keep also existing as a follower of Yahshua. Okay, so let's look at the timeline here. The timeline of the Israeli a Palestinian uh, a conflict. So, intercommunal a conflict between Palestine Jews and Arabs, this a conflict evolved from the declaration of the State of Israel, May the 14th, 1948. That was the birth of Israel. Now, what does this really mean biblically? Is there biblical evidence? I believe that there is, and others do as well. And I'm going to give you a verse, and there are other verses, but um, I, I think that this one is, um, that it opens things up. I'm going to give you a few uh, verses. Isaiah 66, before she was in labor, she gave birth. Before her pain came, she delivered a male child. Isaiah 66 and 7, uh, for a whole lot of us, most of us, we see that as Yahshua's birth. Okay. Shall the earth be made to give birth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? Isaiah 66 verse 8. And that is referring to Israel. Um, I feel so. A whole lot of others do as well. For as soon as Zion was in labor, she gave birth to her children. Uh, 66 and 8. Let's go quickly over the uh, timeline here of the battles after Israel became, was birthed in 1948. Okay. Now, here we go. I'll just say from 1948 to 1966, armed groups are said to be crossing into Israel of, of um, armed groups that are, are Jordanian. Okay, 1951, confronted by the Palestinians. 1952, a Palestinian invasion. 1953, 1954, Israeli a civilian a bus was attacked. 
I've got 1954, 55, 56, 57, 58, 1963, Arab uh, socialism, the, it's uh, a party called Ba'ath, if I got that wrong then you know I tried, Ba'ath, a party, took a power in Iraq and Syria. This was a Palestinian a cause. Uh, 1964, the Palestine a Liberation Organization is, 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 is in place now, which is known, say, famously as the PLO, was uh, founded in Cairo. Okay, 1967, Six Day War, a uh, defensive attack on Egyptian Air Force uh, by Israel, and there's uh, also 2014, a Gaza War. And there's more. I just wanted to give like a synopsis. Okay? So, uh, a summary here. Israelis struggle to exist from its formation has always been going on. From the birthing of Israel, right at, right at the time of birth, it has been trying and uh, standing and fighting to exist. Let's just stop right there. Let's make this, let's take this out of even the context of a physical land. We who follow Christ, we've experienced the a, a new birth in Christ, being born again, transformed, experiencing the Spirit of God in us. From the day that we made that change from darkness to light, as we say in the word, that we are no longer on the other on the other side of God, but now we're on the right side with God. There's been a battle to get us back, to undo what was done. Personally, I know when I be came to follow Christ that I will still hear those voices in my head. There was still a pull. I've made I've I've made a wrong decision. Now my life is over. I'll never have fun. I'll never have those dreams fulfilled. Well, what am I going to do for the rest of my life? I'm hearing that. Although I know I'm feeling peace and joy, and I, I know this is this is that I have now this peace in my heart. But there is this tug of war to get you back, because you are now born again. There's a new birth. Um, when we are carrying something on our spiritual journey, say spiritually, that God has put something in you or me in our hearts to do, to give birth to. There's a season to, uh, to carry, there's a season to give birth. And when it's time, when you are even at a place of holding on to God's uh, promises that He has really put in your heart, you know, it's between a lot of times you and Him. You have to just wait. And as you uh, carry, there comes these seasons of hope and confirmation. But a lot of times as you're getting closer to that time of, say, fruition, there comes even more attacks. Attacks for you to lose to what God has put in you to be aborted. And then when there's birth to something that God said he was going to do, the, it's not the season to relax and take it easy like it was in 1948 with Israel because now there's going to be more attacks from the outsiders, uh, from other influences. And some may say, well, I dispute that because uh, maybe you say, what gave Israel a right to even exist? That's been being said throughout its a history after being born based on God's word God promise after the people were scattered and wondered they would return to the land the Holy Land there's something about that too we don't want to miss it so personally Isaiah 66 because it has been a personal to me as well about uh, giving birth, not to a nation, but to what God has put in my heart. Maybe ministry, but the ministry is for the advancing of God's love and kingdom. 
And when you, even when it is born, there's a tax now for it to, mo to no longer exist. So in the same way, Israel, we can say, well, it's the Southern Levant fault, right? The surrounding uh, nations, Lebanon, Jordan, right? Syria, uh, it's, it's the Palestinians, right? The land of, so who are the Palestinians in the Southern Levant? The land of the Southern part of Canaan, it is said, which other Philistines are. Huh? occupied a small a part all, off at some time in history with you have like I say the names change but uh, the Canaanites and the Phoenicians and the, the Israelis were all in that uh, region and the Palestinians so what is it about this new uh, nation being born in 1948 and now this name is Israel this goes really deep so that verse can apply to you on a personal level, it could apply to the church collectively, but in context, uh, many of us see it specifically as a promise that has been fulfilled in God's Word. And the question is now, why? Why? Because so Israel was known for a believing in the true and the living God at the same time being unfaithful and looking away. This is just also the same, um, say, we and uh, the church who say we are Christians have done all the same. And God wants us to know something through Israel, through what, he, what God has says, these are my chosen people. But the question is why? Why are they uh, chosen? Well, because of they believe in him. When other uh, nations were all around calling on other gods, this chosen group of people became God's chosen people. Okay? And they were called out. And God came into covenant with them. And he wasn't going to break this covenant. He was not going to to break it. God will not divorce Israel, but God doesn't divorce his church today either, even when we know we have been unfaithful. He keeps drawing us back. So all the times that Israel came into agreement with God and covenant of his existence, that he is the one only and true God, people, they still looked away. So God has had his uh, struggles and issues with the people who represent uh, Israel and the history all throughout their uh, history as well. But when God says something, when God speaks something, it stays that way. And no matter the circumstances of their hearts, God was going to be uh, faithful to his remnant that he made a covenant with. He is showing us something, everyone. He is showing us his faithfulness to Israel, but also God's faithfulness to all of us, Jew and Gentile. That's right. Everyone. Uh, all, God has love for the Palestinian people. Absolutely. And so God is showing us his uh, faithfulness. But we get confused and all into, you know, identity, ethnicities, and um, regions. And so it looks like, okay, so now is, is, should we approach, say, the nation of Israel and its formation as becoming, um, say, um, exclusive? But I say no, because Israel is, is really more inclusive than actually people may understand. God doesn't have respect of persons. God is showing us a plan of salvation, redemption, through the nation of Israel, through the people that are from the land at the time when they came into this uh, covenant to believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They were marked and sealed, but still there is this wandering. Um, 
uh, even you know throughout of the history, you know, uh, there was the uh, captivity with of uh, the Babylonians, okay, and the Romans. So we have tribes of Israel that have wandered off into the world. A lot in Europe, but not only Europe. The Jewish diaspora, I say, it's worldwide. And so they, you, and it, it happened at different times in history. There's a tribe in the southern part of Africa called the Limba, L-E-M-B-A, if I'm saying that right, and they uh, link themselves directly back to Israel, and if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, maybe even the lineage of King David. I haven't done that kind of extensive a research but according to them they have and they follow out a Jewish practices and you can Google them because they do exist and they are a vibrant community of Jews okay so Israel is more inclusive than than a lot of its enemies want to make it out to be more exclusive. There's a redemption plan in the nation of Israel that is really for all of us. But yes, God has chosen a people and these uh, people, some people don't even know they have say Jewish lineage. They come to find out you are part of the tribes that have been wandering. But that's not so inclusive either because we are all wanderers. We have all been in exile, and say if you're not directly linked to one of the tribes, you have still been in exile because we have to be redeemed back to the heart of God, the Father. And this is why Yahshua, who was prophesied Messiah, now Yahshua takes care of the issue of sin, the atonement, the separation, because we are dealing with creation, the fall, and redemption you see and now we have the creation we have the fall Adam in the garden and Eve but there's a plan of redemption so we read all these we read the stories throughout the history in the Bible in the Old Testament they're all a part of this plan and God is using a people who are now from the seed of Abraham Isaac and Jacob right it doesn't mean that they're going to be better than everybody else on the earth this is God's plan of salvation and he's called out these people but why call them out because God is into calling us out if you choose to be on the Lord's side you've been called out you are also a part of the redemption plan. You're also a part of the plan of Israel. And so the attack on Israel is really an attack on all of us because really Israel is more inclusive than many of its adversaries would like for you to know. And that's just a fact. And for those who come to understand this, even of other religions, they begin to see. They begin to see the connection. Don't get lost in the people in the people group and how they look. Let's talk about why does Israel exist in the first place. Now, Israel will con continue to come under attacks throughout its uh, history, but the Word of God uh, lets us know that it will overcome all of them. So, let's make this, uh, say, collective for the church, but let's make this very individual. Collectively, the, the church, the body of Christ, will come under attack there are Christians persecuted in North Korea and Nigeria, uh, all, over, all over the world, okay, in China. That's right. India, Pakistan. And when I say that, this is not to come against the people of those regions. Oh, I've had some good times in, in, with people in those places that I've just actually mentioned except for North Korea. I don't think I ever met a North Korean uh, personally. That's pretty hard. 
because they don't really, they don't have the freedom. But I sure, certainly haven't been around a whole lot of South Koreans with some great experiences, you know. But um, yeah, okay. And there are not everyone that is not a Christian in Nigeria is going to be against those who are. No, that's not what we are talking about. As I say, it's a difference from people who are a part of terror and those who are not. So, let me stay on track. We will be attacked as a church, as a remnant of God, but also very personally, we will come under attack and we will have a struggle because if you're honest, you have to feel it to really keep existing as uh, walking in line with the Word of God and living out your life in Christ. That's why we say in the New Testament, the spiritual warfare. It's a battle. We say it's spiritual a warfare because it is and but then we get to see with the nation of Israel there's a spiritual component to everything but we also get to see the physical a warfare so in, in a way you get to see the physical warfare to survive and exist as we are experiencing that uh, as a church in the realm of spiritual warfare where we even are wrestling against spirits that we don't see, right? Not flesh and blood. But then there are a whole lot of Christians that are, are, are you know, they're also a part of the physical attacks and persecution and wars on them, as well as the uh, spiritual. Um, while I'm saying that, just really came to me that as you are led to look more into and to pray for the people uh, who are of, Armenian descent and some of you are aware of what is going on with the Armenians and there's been a long time uh, a plan of genocide against them you see so you know uh, I, I should say that Israel represents all of us and um, God has called out this little nation to be a representation of a divine unfolding of the plan of redemption, salvation, and Jesus and Yahshua. And the neighbors that are around Israel, those that are opposing her existence, and a feeling like uh, she pushed them out or took their place. Um, when you come to understand the uh, truly the divine plan in this you see that you're not excluded as much as you may feel or think and that's true for all of us God selected chosen people to fulfill the divine plan of the gospel and it is for all of us you don't have to be genetically aligned but yet we do want to acknowledge that, yeah, there are those who are, and that's why we have the return to Israel, too. You know, we've had, people have been, it has been a prophesied how those who are part of Israel would be, will come out of their, say, wanderings in the world, because the Bible speaks about how the Jews would be dispersed all throughout the world, right? And different continents and countries and now there's this gathering as it's been a large a gathering that has returned from the regions of the former Soviet Union and Russia and other uh, countries there as well okay they have uh, discovered Jews in Afghanistan Jews in uh, China you see so what make them a Jew we go we go right back uh, to the beginning these are the my people who I've called out they believe in the true and the living God they rejected the gods that they could fabricate in their minds the graven images that you can make with your hand and bow and worship those 
graven images, but they believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, omnipresent, omnipotent, creator of all mankind, humanity. And so now, even though they have this belief, they still go after other gods as well. And there's wandering, there's captivity. Because we are prone, all of us, beginning, I'm going to say for the speaker, to idolatry. To replacing the true God with some other false God. Such is the history of the, the nation of Israel, the Hebrew uh, uh, people. Such is the history of you and me. Such is the history of the inhabitants of the world. The plan of God, none of us put together and none of us can take apart. So either you're going to believe and to accept it and say it's good, it is great, or you're going to reject it. Okay. So, back to Israel. Israel has a significant a purpose and timeline throughout history. From its existence, it's been fighting to exist. I have a call that I'm going to have to let go. <laughs> and it will. So, let me get to this. If you read Ezekiel, the 38th chapter, you will see that these... Let's give that a few minutes. Because <laughs> I'm going to end my video, so I'm not going to stop. My phone's over there. If you read the 38th chapter of Ezekiel, you will see on down, there's different uh, views on this, but there's a call... A, a coalition of nations that come to attack Israel. Okay? And it's it says, it mentions even a Persia. Now, a Persia, in ancient times, you can refer to Iran. I'm not saying only Iran, but uh, Iran. And, um, but today, we don't say really Persia. We say Iran. And I'm not saying there's others as well. So we have Iran, we have Ethiopia, we have Libya, and we have Gog and Magog, which is believed to be the, the regions like, say, uh, around Russia, those areas, and Ukraine, you see? So Eastern Europe, Central Asia, that uh, area which is a part of a Japheth, that whole entire region up there, which is pretty big. So, it is believed by Bible scholars and teachers. And just think about really geographically where they are located and adjacent and, and let's say aligned to Israel. That there will be an attack, a coalition of nations. Are we there? Does this particular tragic war now lead us into that or not? Personally, I don't have that insight and revelation, and maybe I don't have enough understanding yet of the scriptures and the timeline surrounding when these things will occur. But I don't, I don't really feel that the 38th chapter has already happened in Israel. I just don't. Okay? Concerning uh, Israel. But is this leading up to that? Uh, that is possible. It is. So, what can we do? Keep our eye on Israel, but keep our eyes on the Lord. And just remember, the nation of Israel, as we understand it according to the Word of God, God decided, it was God's plan, to reveal His plan of salvation through His Son, Jesus, Yahshua, who was born a Jew, as, uh, a Jew in Bethlehem, in the Middle East. You see how it's all connected, and all of the plan is unfolding as God intended. Um... 
on this particular uh, video, I won't go into more depth about, well, you know, look at the loss of lives, look at, yes, and, and how people choose to do uh, evil. But even those who choose to do evil, there is hope for them too in Yahshua. Okay? So, I'm for peace in the Middle East. But I'm also for uh, representing uh, the nation of Israel and for its existence. And that um, God has uh, chosen this plan and the stories in the Bible that are also a part of the chosen people to lead us all inclusively into John 3.16. For God so loved the world and he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The gospel is inclusive in the birthing of Israel. It is as well. So, you can like and subscribe. And that's a little bit of a long video today. But I wanted to not just talk about what is happening. And this isn't the first time of a war. If, if, if you want to say, what, how do I look at this, say, politically, uh, I think that Israel was off guard for some reason, uh, thrown off guard, and that's, that's also a contributes, I would say, to the, the attack becoming so fierce so quickly. Right. We are warned in the Word of God not to take down our guard, because the enemy he, 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 he roams about seeking who he can devour. That's right. So, thank you for your time today, for listening to this more intense, longer video. Hope if, if you got through it this far, uh, praise God, that's good. Maybe you have to take a few days to get through it. Um, but at any rate, I believe that I have given out uh, information based on the scripture to the, to the best of my knowledge, okay? And you can like and subscribe. Until next time, Shalom.